we are delighted to be hosting. Uh, it is a really cool event, uh, not just for the Sounders, but for the city of Seattle. Um, I don't know if the mayor said this or not when she was here, but was with her this morning for a flag raising and really grateful to her office for their support of our team. Um, and they are going to bring the decibel meter that is used at Seahawks games. And we're going to see if we can uh, outdo an NFL game here with our 69,000 for MLS Cup final. So it should be pretty raucous. It should be a lot of fun. And we're looking forward to it. Garth, this is a third final, obviously, in four years between these two teams, two teams who have had phenomenal success. How do you describe sort of the, the impact they've had in the league? Look, I think both teams have had a lot of stability uh, in, in terms of ownership, in terms of management, in terms of the, the players on the field. Uh, you know, TFC has been, you know, uh, Big, basically since Tim Laiwiki went there and, and they radically increased their spending. They've been, not coincidentally, but they've been very good since then as well. Um, you know, but uh, some of you guys may know, Bill Manning, my old boss at Salt Lake, runs uh, TFC and Ali Curtis and I both went to Duke and Greg Vanny ran the academy at RSL when we were there. So there's a ton of connections between the clubs. So I think a lot of us have a similar philosophy, a way of looking at the game, a way of looking at the league. And I think not surprisingly, we wound up at not dissimilar outcomes in terms of how we've built teams and lots of veterans and guys who have done there and won big games and I think that's why we're both back here again. How proud are you to be living that with Brian Schmetzer who's from Seattle and to live here that here in Seattle and with Jordan Morris as well? Yeah look I, I, there's nobody I could be happier for than Brian Schmetzer. I mean they you know when he talk about a local boy made good uh, and especially you know for those of you guys who haven't spent a lot of time in Seattle I mean the, the city is really pretty radically transformed even just within the last 10 years uh, with some of the tech stuff coming up this way uh, and it was reasonably isolated for a pretty good period of time and so there's a ton of civic pride like maybe even more than than leaks through now uh, and for those guys who were here at the beginning and and were part of the you know the NASL Sounders and the USL Sounders and then the MLS Sounders and now the big time MLS Sounders and so those guys have earned it Adrian Hanauer's earned it he's he's been the owner for a good stretch of that way um, and you know those guys to, for them to have this in their hometown I think is absolutely amazing and and like you say when you talk to Jordan just that little that little glimmer in his eye, that little just sense of just joy, like that I get to be here and I get a chance to win a title on my on my home field, like that I grew up wanting to play for, like want, wanting to play on. I think it's a pretty neat moment for them. You've had some pretty big goal scorers uh, at this club, Dempsey, Obafemi, uh, now Raul. Um, what what makes him different than those guys? Obviously not the biggest guy, not the strongest guy, not the fastest guy, but what, what makes him special? What makes him different than... You know he's he's pretty even keeled. You know I think that uh, uh, with with forwards, you, what you really want is consistency, right? And and he shows up every day and he works hard. Uh, I think Raul Wolves is an amazingly uh, consistent player, but also a consistent person. You know he shows up out here at practice and works. Um, you know he's not a prima donna. He's not a guy that wants a special treatment here or there or anything like that. And like what I think we've seen in the playoffs, in particular in the run up to the playoffs was a guy willing to work both ways, right? I mean, the rap on him has always been, he touches the ball 20 times a game. He's just a poacher, that's all he does. Well, look, if I have one shot to win one game at any point in my life, I'm picking Raul to take the shot. So he's pretty darn good at that. But what he's become this season for us is a really complete player. Um, and that showed in particular against LAFC where really, I mean, he was holding the ball. He was double teaming down on guys. And, you know, he may not be the biggest guy in the world, but he is strong, man. I mean, try running around him to get him off the ball. So we've been really proud of him. Um, uh, and, you know, really lucky to have him and Nico, you know, as the kind of core of our team, and I think they make everybody better. Is that a quality you guys coached into him or coached out of him, or is that something he's always had and he's just showing it off now? Look, I mean, I, we've had him for a year and a half. His career is obviously much longer than that, so i got to give him credit. You know, I, you know, players win games. Uh, you know, I, I told everybody here locally that, you know, September 15 came, roster freeze. I put my pencil down at that point. I'm done. Uh, and it's up to the players and the coaches at that point. So certainly in the big moments and the big games, you know, those are decided by big players, whether that's Jordan Morris or Steph Fry or Ladero or Svensson or Rui Diaz, whomever. Um, you know, and the cool thing about us is we've had different guys able to step up, not just this season, but over, you know, the last four years. So um, you try to build a team that's got some some different ways to win, some different ways to score. Um, but Rule has been a, a huge part of it. And, you know, credit to him that, you know, he had these qualities. And, you know, what I think are, is been cool about how we've worked as a group is, we make each other better. And, you know, when we signed Ladero, 
Uh, we wanted him to be a force magnifier. That was the term we used to make everybody around him better, to be able to play with the ball at least some of the time. Uh, and then we added Rui Diaz. We really felt like that was the capstone. That was the final piece to complete the puzzle, to say, OK, how do we get the best out of Ladero? Somebody to stick home the goals for the chances he creates. And I think that pairing together has been really, really elemental to what we what we want to do. How was uh, had to deal with a lot of different pieces around him this season. How has he been able to adjust? And I'm sorry, Kim Keyes. Oh, yeah, yeah, shoot. Uh, Kim, uh, hats off to him, man. I mean, it, it, this is the first uh, Asian player that we've signed here. may not be the first ever, but the first one that, that I've had on one of my teams. And the amount of work he's put in to learn English and to assimilate and to acculturate, um, it is not easy. Because, I mean, Torres doesn't speak any English. Javier knows a little bit. Um, and so now he's in an environment where in training he's learning English to be able to talk to his teammates. And we, all we do is we stick him with a center back that only speaks Spanish and a goalkeeper only speaks English behind him. So we don't make it easy. And, and he's, he's a really smart guy. Um, and that, that's really helped in terms of his adjustment and his studying. Um, but look, he has some really solid foundational qualities, right? He's fast, he's good on the ball. Uh, and with those things, I think he's been a good complement to both Javier and Roman, who are a little bit more physical players. And you know, when we sign center backs, we talk about partnerships. We talk about, you know, when we talk about relationships between wingers and, and outside backs on the outside of the field, and in the middle of the field, we talk about partnerships between defensive midfielders and between center backs. And we feel like Kim's a good complement to either Roman or Javier. Uh, and in that sense, he's also played people, uh, I don't think, have paid enough attention to this. He started 30 games for us this year. He's the only player on our roster to start 30 games. So he's been there, a steady, rock solid contributor all year long. How was your interesting journey this season for Roman? Talk about your view on it. You got a 19% chance to win, according to the computer models. There is one guy in the team that packs his swim goggles. So we beat LAFC, we come in, and we go in, and Roman is shirtless like this with his goggles on. We have not provided him that he is pulled out of his bag in his locker room, and he's ready to party. He's ready to start dancing. So, I mean, he is he is lively, he is optimistic, he is upbeat, and he's, he's great, right? Because um, Brian, while, you know, is kind of mild-mannered, right? And, and, and every day is even keel, and that's a great quality about him, but Roman can get him fired up, and Roman makes everybody happy, and, um, you know, it's not, it's, yes, he's made an impact on the field, and, you know, he's been in, he's been out, he's been back in. Uh, he's another guy, though, that's played in an awful lot of big games. You know, the, the last time he played Toronto, he was beating him in sudden death penalty kicks uh, on the road. So, uh, you know, that's a really good quality. And, uh, you know, but he's been instrumental in our locker room and part of, as part of our culture and really keeping the guy, the group loose, especially ahead of some of these big moments. So you had to keep faith in him throughout the, the suspension as well. Right? Yeah, look, it's been a four-year ride. I mean, we, we, we signed him at the end of 2015, and he tore his ACL and missed a, almost a year. Uh, and then we had to actually, I mean, like everyone, everyone remembers the 2016 penalties, but the reality is that we, we didn't have him as a center back, you know, and, and he had to come in as a center back in August of that year, almost September by the time he started all the time. Uh, and so he ramped up, jumped right in, won that, and then everyone's like, oh, he's been here forever because it felt that way. Um, but then in 17, you know, again, it's, it's just been, it's always been a not straightforward path with Roman, uh, but he feels like he's always there in the end. Uh, and that gives you a sense of trust and reliance on him that in that big moment he's going to come through. And look, it, it's not just with us, right? I mean, he qualifies Panama for the only World Cup in their history and does it how? But of course, by going on a breakaway and scoring in a ridiculous goal in the last couple minutes of the game to put him through himself. So, like, the man's built for big moments and, and hopefully he's got another another couple in him. Can you say what, yeah, last Bill, couple for Garth. what Bill Manning was like as a boss? How was your partnership with him? I worked for Bill for seven years. Uh, he's a good man. Uh, we were texting back in Troy Fourth. I think every round of the playoffs, one of the what we were either giving he was giving me stick or I was giving him stick about who's going to catch up with whom, uh, depending on who played first that weekend. Uh, so he's a good man. He's got a great family. Um, you know, he was so gracious in 2016. Uh, you know, after they had, had suffered that defeat, and, and it was funny in 2017, um, he, he and I were sit, sat in different sections of the stadium, but he came down a back stairway, and we were kind of you know ha hanging our heads and you know, having been run off the field in 2017, and you know we just saw each other. And we just gave each other just a great big hug and, and you know he'll always be part of my life and, and you know was a big part of my development as an executive uh, and so I, I tip my hat to him he's done a great job in Toronto and looking forward to seeing him this weekend going back, you guys going back to, to, to Ro, uh, what was it about him that you guys said this is the, the striker we want this is the guy we want and obviously you guys have money to spend you guys 
have good scouting. What was it about Raul that you guys said, this is the guy that, that we want up top? This was my favorite question. I started with it. Well, anyone ask me a question, I've asked. This is actually my favorite question I get asked. How did you find Raul Ruiz Diaz? What did you like about him? So we did this incredibly thorough process. We found the leading scorer in Mexico, not once but twice. But we found a guy that scored 15 goals six years in a row. And, we thought, and then we found out that he did that on Morelia, not the biggest team in Mexico. So after this extensive, at least five minute long internet search, we're like, huh, that, that guy, he might be pretty good. Um, we should call him because most of the time when you get a guy like that, they're like, I don't want to come to MLS. I don't want to come to the Sounders. And so we called them like, oh yeah, I want to come. I'm like, seriously? Okay. Like, and then we'll call Morelia. All right. That, that, you, you want to sell them? Sure. I'll, okay. All right. Let's do it. So it's been, it was one where, whereas Ladero dragged on for months and was agonizing and our team was failing and, you know, did we have to cave and get another player in because he was never going to make it in time in 2016? Raul was the opposite. And, and you know, culminating by, he goes to Peru. We got a verbal agreement on the deal. He goes to Peru. They get knocked out. He's in, I think, Sochi when they got knocked out. Within 24 hours, flies to Moscow, back to Seattle, signs his contract, does media, and goes back to Peru to start his visa. So, like, you know, he wanted to be here. And when we sign these guys, here's the honest answer, man. Those guys come when they decide they want to be here. Nico really wanted to be here. Raul really wanted to be here. Usually, from a Seattle perspective, there's some family stuff that's part of that because we're not New York, we're not LA. It's a pretty good place to live. Um, people are respectful here. They're very nice. They're going to respect people's privacy, things like that. And it doesn't hurt that we put forty thousand in the building because you know, in every recruiting video, again, as good looking as I am, I actually I'm not in the video. Um, I just put in the. Uh, uh, I, in there? Yeah, it's you know, I, I wink at him. It's, it's just it's <laughs> subtle though. It's in the background, take like up from the cloud. Um, but we show the rest of the stadium, and uh, you know, that's actually who they care about, and you know, the fans are who support. Them and that's why they're here. So we're really lucky to have them.